This week, we got a disturbing reminder that anti-Semitism is on the rise in the country. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel said that she was among a group of Jewish lawmakers targeted for murder by a heavily armed former University of Michigan employee who's been arrested by the FBI. The Anti-Defamation League reports that anti-Semitic incidents reached a record high in 2021, up 34 percent from the previous year. Last year, an extraordinary meeting of Jewish leaders was convened at the White House following Donald Trump's dinner with two known anti-Semites. Extraordinary because of who was leading it. Douglas Emhoff, the second gentleman of the United States. Earlier this week, I spoke with Emhoff, who is breaking barriers as the first husband of a vice president and the first Jewish person in the position about becoming the administration's leading voice in the fight against anti-Semitism, both at home and abroad. You've made speaking out about anti-Semitism, but you've really leaned into it. Talk more about why that's so important. I, I wish I wouldn't have to, Jonathan. And this is something that has been so prevalent. It has been just, just exacerbating itself here and worldwide just in the last several months. And so as the vice president tells me, this is an issue that found me and I was really ready to jump into it. And between traveling to Europe, uh, the, the, the picture next to oh, that, I was funny. at the UN uh, with Ambassador uh, Greenfield and others uh, talking to the UN about this scourge of anti-Semitism and hatred in general. It's not just a Jewish issue, it's an issue for all of us. And talking to leaders of, of all the other countries how we need to band together on this as nations, but we need to band together as just people because it's, again, it's not just a Jewish issue, it affects all of us. Well, and, and I hear you when you say it's not just a Jewish issue. You are the first Jewish person to be in this role right. um, of, the four, of the four of you. Do you feel, I don't know, an extra sense of responsibility given the platform that yes. you have to speak out? Definitely, and, and coming into office, I thought being a man would be the big, bigger deal, and it is a big deal, we, we've talked about that, but being Jewish, I honestly didn't think it'd be that big a deal, but as it turns out, it is. And it's just also the representation of living openly and, and proudly and joyfully as a Jew, which I always, I love being Jewish. I love to show it. So we have the mezuzah on the, on the right. door coming in. We've celebrated Hanukkah and Rosh Hashanah, all the things we've done at the White House and, and the residents. But it's really this speaking out about anti-Semitism and the violence and the hate um, that is just so important. And I feel the responsibility uh, being in this role, being the first one, and I'm gonna continue to, to lean in and speak up, speak out and call out, and call out those who stay silent. There's so many cowards out there who know better, and you know they know better. These so-called leaders who see it and they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. That's just as bad. So we, we need to change course. So the administration, president, vice president, have stood up an interagency, task force. There's many, many aspects of the government working on a plan. We're going to have a national plan to combat anti-Semitism and hate, and we're going to roll it out. And we're going to do everything we can as an administration to, to push back on this. We have to. We do indeed. And the reason why we sat down with Emhoff is because this is Women's History Month, and this coming Wednesday is International Women's Day. So our conversation turned to how Douglas Emhoff, the first second gentleman, a man in a role that had only been occupied by women till now, uses this position to support his history-making wife, Vice President Kamala Harris. International Women's Day is March 8th. Um, you're married to the most powerful woman in the country, arguably probably in the world, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. How does she exemplify what that day is all about? The representation of Kamala Harris as Vice President of the United States is just massive. I've seen it not only here in the United States, but I've traveled all over the world. And you really can see that impact of having a woman in this powerful role, I mean, what it means for the country and what it means for the world. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. You know, can we talk about gender roles here and specifically about you? You're the first second gentleman of the United States, um, the first man in this role. What has that adjustment been like for you? You know, it's, it, it's been interesting. Um, 
to say the least. But first of all, I'm only here because the country elected Kamala Harris as vice president. And I always think of that first and foremost. I also think of first and foremost, I'm here as her husband. I'm here to love her, to support her, and to do everything I can to be there for her. Uh, that said, I really um, just pushed into the role. And I realized with this, with this microphone and this platform, there's issues such as gender equity, such as pushing against hate and anti-Semitism, speaking out for access to justice, and all these other things that I'm able to do in this role. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. I'm going to talk more about your role in a moment. I have a theory about why you've become a popular member of this administration, a popular figure in the administration. But why do you think you are someone who people like genuinely like? Well, first of all, I've had the benefit of being with Kamala Harris. So I've, I've picked up so many great things on how to, how to do this from her. And so that's first and foremost. But I got some great advice from, from Dr. Biden early on, which was just be yourself. You know, you're going to be the first man in this role. She's going to be the first woman. It's going to be a lot of scrutiny. You can't fake it. So just, just be who you are. Be your true, authentic self. And that's all I've tried to do. So then that gets to my theory of why you are a popular figure in the administration. It's your love for the vice president. Um, it is palpable. Uh, it probably comes through the screen right now. You <laughs> revel in her accomplishments. You're her biggest cheerleader. What do you hope other men take from how you support your wife? Well, look, I love my wife a lot. And I'm, I'm going to be there for her through thick and thin, no matter what. I'm always going to have her back. And I think that's a good way to be for, for people who you love, whether it's your spouse or other people in your family, in your world. You know, when you love someone, you, ha you have their back and you got to be there for them no matter what's going on. Um, the other thing I, I always think about, too, is in this role, like I want more Kamala Harris's in the future. And I want to do as, as good a job as I can, try to set as good an example as I can so some other person out there might say, hey, that Doug Emhoff guy was very supportive. Uh, if my partner's like that, I'm going to throw my name in, into the ring and, and run for something. So I'd love to see that.